All right, well, I've shown in my previous video the removal process that I used to get this pan out. And now I'm going to go through the steps uh, to installing this pan. And as I showed in the previous video, there is some damage uh, from somebody else's work where they had cut through the floor support slash frame rail. And so, let me sh there, uh, I'm going to fix that stuff. And there's also a big gash right there. So I'm going to weld those up, make them solid again. And uh, a couple other things. Whenever you're doing these, sometimes the these rails could be distorted. You know, from separating the welds or whatnot, they could get bent out of shape. So I've already hammered and dollied these and smoothed them up. But really, it's as simple as taking a dolly, setting it up underneath, and hitting it with a hammer and smoothing it out. The other part of that is this car, since I can't replace these uh, floor supports because of the um, frame connectors there's some damage to the floor support maybe you can see it there where it's been uh, bent up from using a, a jack and what I'll do is use a hammer and whatever tooling I can come up with and knock that back down there's a big high spot right there so I'll knock that back down my point is I'm trying to take care of a few things while I have access to it and I'll also blow all this out, all this material out of here, and spray this with some primer because you can see from the previous uh, welds where the frame connections were put in, you know, that's got some bare metal. And, um, you know, while, while you're in there, go ahead and treat the metal, make it right. So I'm going to continue on getting this ready, and then I'll go through some other steps of uh, prepping the pan. Well, I welded up all the cut throughs, and there was a little that V out that was right here, and a few other places. I also, you can see it, knocked out that dent, most of it anyway. And I've got the uh, surface area here sanded out, uh, removed all the all the old welds and whatnot. So now. What I'll do is I'm going to set the pan in place and show you something else. Now with the pan in place, I can put a you know trace the line up here and verify where I, um, where I need to bear the metal for my weld seam. I've already got that located here, and I'll have to obviously do that in that curve. And I've noticed that in this area here, there's about an extra inch of metal that I really don't need. Um, it overlaps a lot right in that area. So what I'll do is cut off that piece. And then I was going to put my welds here, but I'm going to put them over here uh, on this, this panel. And also I've located where I'm going to put my other welds. And... I transferred my marks so that I have my locations to drill uh, so I can weld against the inner rocker panel. And the other thing I did, um, and I'll have to pull the pan out to show you, but whenever I do this I usually push down on this pan and I'll trace the perimeter of the floor support. And that way I know when I've turned it and pull this back off where my pattern can be so I can drill holes in the top of this pan and weld down to the floor support. I also did that up there where it kicks up. And uh, that's about it. I'll pull this pan out and show you what I'm talking about. And there's the pan upside down. And you can see I traced the perimeter of the frame rail or floor support and also the cross member which is right there and I went forward also up into the toe kick area and basically I just laid out a pattern about two and a half inches or so maybe two inches and I'll drill those holes prep that metal and uh, I'll have good areas to weld to when it goes back in um, I'll also before I do anything I'll, I'll put uh, weld through primer on all the mating surfaces so that uh, that's there to protect the metal as well 
And let me get some, let me get some holes drilled and trim down some metal and um, start putting this thing in. Okay, so I've got all my holes drilled. I've bared the metal around the edges and around the holes. And I laid the pan back up in place. And just to verify, I took a black sharpie and marked all my holes so I can make sure it was on my rail. And it's up there as well. I think you can see it. And then going up the cross member. It'll be hard to see, but they're there. And I also drew another line to verify my edge again. And I marked the areas back here as well. So, uh, other than putting in some uh, weld through primer, it's about ready to go in. Now, I'll still have to build that little pocket I talked about down there, but I, I wanted to do that after the pan was in place because it's hard to work a shape unless you have a shape there. So that makes sense. Uh, at this point I'll get some uh, primer in there and start welding. Now before I start welding the pan in, I'm gonna do one more thing and that's transfer the seat belt mount from the old panel to the new one. So you can see I've already taken the sanding disc and gone over the top so I can expose the welds. And then I'll use, in this case it's his wheel, and grind down those welds until I expose the uh, boss on the back side. And then separate that. And then I'll just duplicate that same pattern here around the hole that I'm going to put in right there. Then I'll weld that in and I'll take care of the seatbelt mount. And that's really all it takes ground through, expose the welds, drill the holes. I use a, a step drill. Uh, this is from Harper Freight. And then I went a little bit bigger to make the hole have room for the bolt. So I'll slip that back up in there and clamp it. Weld those holes. Of course I'll put some weld through primer on there. And that'll take care of the seatbelt mount. At this point, I've got a clamp holding the uh, panel up there. I've got one through the floor pan holding it to the frame rail. And I've got one back here holding it to the rear mount area. And as I've done this, I've, I'll push down on the panel gently with a hammer and tack weld in place. And then I'll follow around and knock that down if there's any lip there that's sticking up. For the most part, Everything on that edge right there is nice and flat. There's a little gap right there, and that'll push back with the hammer, like that. And then uh, I'll just do some tack welds around the edge like you see there. Yeah, but there will be a full weld. Uh, I stress that. I will not do a little gaps. I will do a full weld on that perimeter. And I'll also start welding in these um, plug welds and get this pan zip together nice and solid well all the major welding is done all the plug welds are in, in place and then the perimeter weld with the overlap I've still got a little hole to fill there of course the seat belt mount and then all the other welds on the inner rocker Still a little bit more to do down this corner. And of course build that pocket. Um, but I'm gonna blend down these welds. I had a, a YouTuber ask me about blending. And basically I just use uh, a sanding disc, you know, a rough grit sanding disc on an air grinder or a 90 grinder. And I just work the surface down, try not to take away too much of the parent metal. And I may even leave a, a ring of the spot weld I don't want to blend it totally smooth. I want his, you know, good contact area and uh, not weaken the weld. But that's how I do it. I'm gonna, you know, work these down and then also blend. Uh, oops, blend, you know, the welds down here 
partly because it'll just be smoother for the transition when the carpet goes in, but also because the seat riser will interact at some point with some of this. Uh, so I need to prep it for that as well. All right, so I'm gonna make a filler for down in that corner. And of course it's, you know, a curve in that direction. The panel comes down and has a curve down in that bottom. And my goal is gonna be to make a filler that will be butt welded in there and then uh, lap weld across the top just like I did with the rest of the panel. So what I did is I measured from the corner about three and a half inches or so in each direction and just made a panel out of a flat piece. And this is some leftover floor pan from another Mustang project. And uh, of course I used a throatless shear. Ta-da! Cut that out. And then I wanted to, I cut a V out of that bottom right there so the metal had somewhere to go. And that's what this piece is. Well then I wanted to shape it because it wouldn't have been a hard corner. It would have been a curve. So I had uh, this receiver hitch ball sitting around and basically I used that as a shaping tool. Use my hammer and tap it around. And then I'll weld that uh, that's that's cut right there. And I will press it into the opening so that I can trace it from the back side, most likely, um, and then trim it down until it fits in that corner. Maybe that makes a little more sense. I've trimmed it down some. I'm not done yet and it's in position but it's just tacked and I did that so that I can get underneath the car and trace the edge and then eliminate what metal I don't need. After a few fits and trials and tests I determined that with that cut that I had made uh, and the shaping that I did it made it too deep but I'm going to show you this because not everything comes out perfect but uh, the nice part is with metal you can fix it. So I made a repair piece and I'll weld that in and blend it all smooth and it'll be just fine. But I wanted to show you that because you know it takes trial and error to make some of these things fit. You're not going to get it on the first shot. Normally, even I don't get it on the first shot. But uh, just want to show you that you know you can make adjustments and make things fit. And there's the end result. I think it turned out pretty good. And I've already trimmed it to fit. And uh, getting ready to weld that in. And there's the patch welded in place. Now I still have more blending to do on that edge. But for now that's all I'm going to worry about. It's in place and it's solid. And I'm going to move on to installing the seat riser. And I have a new one here from Mustangs Unlimited. It's a Spectre Premium. And this mimics the original quite well. Uh, here's the original one. You can see the bracing that was inside. And that's duplicated here. That's what the spot welds show. Is where the, the uh, reinforcement is for your mount point. And of course when I put this in, these holes have to correspond with the four big holes in the floor pan. Um, kind of important when you want to bolt your seat down that you have access to it. So the steps involved with this is I'm, I've already laid out a pattern and I'm going to drill out these marks so that I have a, a place to do my plug welds or spot welds. And I've also got a pattern laid out on this edge and I'll drill a hole here and probably one or two in this piece and then that pattern there on the front. Now I may also drill out a hole or two on this little flange and the original this was welded on the edge and I could do it either way I could drill holes or I can weld it on the edge and I may just weld it on the edge just for simplicity. Now, I've already test fitted this piece but I'm gonna show you something I'm gonna set it back in and show you what needs to be done. Alright this isn't fully set in but what I'm going to show partly was this is the old welds um, from the original pan so that tells me a good location for the new pan setting it down in 
it doesn't fit as well as it should. It's really tight because this is too long or this is too long here. And you can see it's making contact and there's a little bit of a gap right here. And this is where you just need to play with it. Um, I'll take a hammer and I'll probably roll this flange back just a little bit and roll that back a little bit and just work on it piece by piece until it sits down flush as needed. When I get to that point, uh, I will outline the pattern or the panel itself with a sharpie, a silver sharpie. And the reason I do that is I know where to blend off the coating from the floor pan. So whenever I come back to weld it, I have bare metal. And I'll show you that when I get to that point. All right, the, the pan is sitting as I want it. It's, I've massaged it in, like I said, I rolled that corner back a little bit, and I was able to get it to sit down nice and flush. I also, if you look at this edge here, I trimmed off. There was a big triangle came way up high. I trimmed that off. It's not needed, and it puts me just way out of the area that I'm going to work in. But uh, I want to point out something else as well. I laid this framing square in here, and it's up against the inner rocker, and it's square. And you can see there's a gap right here. And it follows out, of course, you know, it's the length of it, it's 16 inches in this case. Um, and that's the way it's designed. If you compare that to the driver's side, and I've also, that's the original pan or panel. It's never been removed or replaced. But these panels actually sit at a slight offset. Now, why they did this, I don't know. You would look at this and think, you know, the seats wouldn't line up. But apparently they've got the geometry figured out with the seat tracks to where this works. But again, I don't know why they do this, but I wanted to point this out so that when you look at these, you know, and you're working on putting them in, that you'll see that they're not square. In fact, it is the same way on this back edge. This is actually kind of pointed that way. Um, that said, let me get that out of the way. And as you can see, I've drilled my holes around the perimeter. And I also traced it like I said I was gonna do. So let me lift that up. Now I can take my sanding disc and just bare, you know, half inch or three quarter inch square, whatever, in those areas. And then I'll come back with some weld through primer and put on top of that so that I can weld them in. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'll get some paint, just basic paint, and I'll paint the underside of this. These panels come uh, with a coat of oil on them. And of course I had to clean all that off to work with them. And I'll remove the stickers and stuff as well. But, not that I think it's going to be any big deal uh, as far as rust or moisture, but I will paint the bottom side of these just to protect them. I also put, I'll put some uh, weld through primer on all the holes, like I said, and weld it in. Um, the other thing, any metal that's bare underneath here, I'll also put probably some self-etch on, on these spot welds, and try to, I'll put some seam sealer uh, behind all this. Just in a welded area for now just so it's protected and uh don't have to worry about it later and of course i'll put seam sealer on the bottom of that pan whenever uh i get to the underside so i'm gonna get this pan welded in and just about finish up with this side and that finishes up the passenger side so i've got all my welds in i did the edge weld like i said just like the factory did um, did some more blending, smoothed up areas there, had that little patch in a corner I had to put in. And uh, at this point, what I'll do is I'll end up uh, putting the epoxy primer on everything and then a seam seal. And that way everything's sealed up nice and tight. And I won't do that until I finish the driver's side. I don't think I'm going to do a video on the driver's side. It's, it's the same process, same repair. Um, the only thing you really have to be careful of is over in that area should be a fuel line on these cars. So of course when you're making your cuts you have to be careful of that. Um, went pretty well. I'm happy with it. And there will be more videos on this car to come. Thanks for watching.